Renewable energy is the need of the hour, and India's ambitions have helped grow our solar manufacturing industry significantly over the past few years. But there is one key factor missing, and if companies in the space plan to stay profitable, they have to address the issue. What is it, and why is it important? Are corporates working to fill the gap? Stay tuned till the end of this video to find out where the industry really stands. Before I get into where India currently stands in the solar manufacturing landscape and what's missing, let's first get a summary on what the entire value chain entails. The first segment is the polysilicon production. Your high purity silicon is the primary raw material and this is itself purified to produce polycrystalline silicon to form building blocks for what will eventually become solar cells. The second phase is ignot and wafer manufacturing where polysilicon is melted into large cylindrical blocks of solar silicon which are then sliced into thin circular wafers. The wafers then undergo a series of processes to create photovoltaic or solar cells that we all are familiar with. And finally, individual solar cells are interconnected to form strings which are then coupled with a frame glass and back sheet to form solar modules or commonly known as solar panels. So where does India stand in this value chain? Well, currently we are limited to producing only solar modules and cells. The growth here has been massive. India's solar module and cell capacity has grown significantly at a 60% and 40% compounded annual growth rate respectively over FY17 to FY24. But there is a problem. As per Bernstein, these two areas are among the least profitable in the entire solar value chain. That is exactly why India needs to find the solution, the missing link. If businesses in the segment want to maintain long-term profitability, things have to undergo massive change. So what is this critical input that is missing? It is referred to as backward integration, which means building capabilities across all segments. Why is this important? Well, Bernstein notes that profitability in the polysilicon and modules is inversely related. When one rises, the other falls. The brokerage's analysis of Chinese solar manufacturers also showed that from 2011 to 2019, cell and module manufacturers have underperformed the most, while polysilicon and ignot wafer producers fared better. The solar module and cell industry has limited potential due to several factors. One major reason is the low entry barrier. This includes fast execution, low capital expenditure and minimum scale requirements, which result in intense competition. This limits manufacturers' pricing power as they can't pass on rising input costs without losing customers to cheaper alternatives. For instance, in November 2022, while polysilicon and wafer prices rose by 238% and 115% from their December 2020 peak levels, solar cell and module prices only increased by 32% and 9%. Additionally, solar module prices have dropped significantly from 27 to 28 cents per watt in 2022 to just 9 to 10 cents today reducing the revenue potential per megawatt for companies. Furthermore, technological advancements can quickly make existing capacity outdated. So how does backward integration help a company? Well, integration allows a company to absorb price shocks better, acting as a natural hedge. When returns in one segment drop, another can compensate. Bernstein highlights that backward integration, at least to the way for segment, is key for stability. The brokerage points are how globally integrated players like Canadian Solar, Jinko Solar and Longi Green, who expanded across the entire solar value chain, have consistently achieved positive return on equity. In contrast, pure place cell and module manufacturers like Motec Industries and TSEC Corp have been hit by volatility. Bernstein also knows that the current market assumes that existing profitability of Indian solar manufacturers will continue. But this is unlikely to happen as per the brokerage. Only large players entering the ignored wafer segment will be able to sustain growth in the long term. So is backward integration on Indian solar companies' radar? Well, plans have been set in motion, but the result of capacity is yet to go completely on stream. Four companies are leading the way. The first is newly listed Warrior Energies. The company not only plans to grow its solar module and cell capacity to 21 gigawatts and 11 gigawatts by FY27, but it also managed to raise funds via its recent IPO. So these funds will be used to set up an integrated plant in Odisha, which will have a 6 gigawatt waveform production capacity. Next is Adani Enterprises, whose energy and utility unit, Adani New Industries, plans to grow its solar manufacturing capacity to a 10 gigawatt backward integrated facility by 2027. Notably, the company plans to produce modules, cells, ignots, wafers, as well as polysilicon. As of Q2FY25, the company had 4 gigawatts of operational solar module and cell capacity and a 2 gigawatt of ignot and wafer plant already operational. The next is Premier Energies. It too plans to set up a 2 gigawatt wafer and a 36,000 ton aluminum framing manufacturing capacity by FY26 while also growing its cell and module capacity. 
and last of all is Reliance Industries, who plans to set up a 20 gigawatt solar giga factory, which will produce products across the value chain in the space. With the country's hunger for new and viable energy sources set to skyrocket, quick solutions are required. And it is these companies that hold the key to power India's growth to new heights. And that concludes this presentation. Do let us know what you want us to analyze next in the comments below and stay tuned to NDTV Profit for more such insights.